further ado, here are the speakers on APT. Hi. If something goes wrong, so it's because of the shot, right? Okay. Um, I'm Sergio Los Santos. I come from Spain, head of security and lab in 11 Path, which is the Telefonica Cyber Security Unit. And I'm Sheila, and I work as security researcher as well in 11 Path. I'm 23 years old, and I came from Argentina. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, let's start. Um, in the world of threat intelligence, determining the attacker's geographical location of is one of the most valuable data for attribution techniques. However, in some cases, tracking a malware developer can turn into a pretty difficult thing, and the researcher start getting mad and even feels a little bit frustrated. <laughs> That's why we are always paying attention to new techniques that might help to track malware developers and reach the potential origin of a malware campaign. In this presentation, we'll focus on Android, first talking about two new techniques that we found to track Android malware developers um, by, heading the, by getting the type zone of them. The first technique has to do with a bug inside the Android SDK Eventually in the picture, this bug makes a time zone disclosure of the computer where the developers have compiled the malware. And the second technique is related to a calculation of creation times between the certificate of the APK and some files inside it. Throughout our talk, we'll get deep in these two new techniques, and finally, we'll talk about how we can do an accurate from the time zone that we got to one specific country. So let's start talking about the Android bug. When we download the Android SDK, it comes with a tool named APT. We can find this tool inside the SDK folder under Build Tools API version. And if we run APT, we can observe in the first line that this is the Android Asset Vacation tool. So we can use this program from command line to add some files to an APK, dump the file, see their information, among other things related to APK management. Due to an, an APK shares the PKZIP standard, every file inside it has a date and time of last modified. However, when we use APT for adding some files into an APK, we notice something strange in these date and time fields. They are not the real ones. Instead, the right date and time information, we usually saw something like 010180, an hour, and 00. That three in the hour field caught our attention because if we change the time zone of the computer to, for example, GMT plus eight, that three turned into an eight. And if we change the time zone to GMT plus four, the hour was four. So what the hell is happening here? Is this a kind of GMT offset? Well, after we noticed that, we started to analyze the source code of the APT. It is published on Google Git, and inside the path of APT, there are several files that compose the source code of this program. So we put our attention in those files related to zipping process. Inside the zip file.c++, there is a method named addcommon that is invoked for every file that will be added to an APK. As we can observe, this method receives as parameter, the file name, the size, and some other thing related to the file being stored into an APK. So, Analyzing the code of this method, we observe that there is a call to another method named setModWhen using a parameter, the modWhen variable. If we look for this variable, we, can we find that it's a time t type and it's initialized to zero. It should be used inside the setModWhen method, so let's check this code. 
Submod1 is located into the zip entry.c++ file of the source code of AAPG. There we have the method and its parameter. Remember that when is equal to zero. And inside this method, there is another variable of time t type, its name even. And the value of even is the value of when. So even is equal to zero too. But the question here is, is the even variable used for anything at all? Well, immediately after the lines that we saw before, even is used as parameter for local time function. ETM is a TM structure where local time will save its result. And after that, the result is used for assigning the last modifier field for every file that will be added to an APK. So, at this moment, we have a problem identified. In AAPT, local time function is receiving as parameter the even value, that is zero, when the expected argument for local time function is a real timestamp. So let's analyze it in runtime. Here we are attached to AAPT. Uh, we have run the debugger with parameters for adding a file. Uh, we put a breakpoint on the SAR routine that we were analyzing in the source code. And at this moment, we can observe the even variable with value zero being passed to local time function as an argument. The result of this, of course, is the one that we were seeing for so the time zone disclosure of the computer. But what would happen if we pass to local time function the expected argument, that means a real timestamp? Well, now we have altered the value of event, putting a timestamp of Unix epoch. And surprise, the date and time of last modify was the correct one. So let's show you a video demo with all this in action. The computer is in Xiaomi T plus three. Uh, we have run the debugger with two parameters, uh, parameters for adding two files. We put a breakpoint, uh, we reach the breakpoint for the first file, but this time we won't fix anything, just we will leave in the even value to zero as normal execution. But for the second file, we will fix this bug We'll put a real timestamp, Unix epoch, of course in Excel is more. We are changing the value of even from zero to the real timestamp. We continue the process and it will finish. So we can use now APT for extracting the days of any APK. So now we can see this APK with the first file with this bug making the time zone disclosure and the second file with this bug fixed. Yes, showing the right date and time information. Well, at this moment we are convinced that there is a bug inside APT, but why does this end in a time zone disclosure of the computer? Well, local time function makes a calculation to put the correct hour in the hours field. It takes the, the Unix epoch coming from the parameter, that is UTC0, and makes a sum or subtraction with the time zone of the computer. For example, if the time zone of the computer is GNT plus three, it makes the Unix epoch plus three hours. And if the time zone is GNT minus three, it makes the subtraction, the Unix epoch minus three hours. With that, local time function gets the correct hour in the local computer. But in APT, where we found this bug, local time is making a sum or subtraction over zero. So GNT plus three is just zero plus three. That's why we will see the, in the hour fields the three number. In the case of GNT minus three is the subtraction zero minus three, but this subtraction affects the day too. 
Now we'll see December 31 of 79 and at 21 in the hour. That 21 is the result of the subtraction 24 minus 3. So those GMT offsets of GMT minus whatever might look a little bit confused. So for that, we made an offset table that we'll be showing you later. And there's a little detail when we use APT instead of seeing uh, December 30, 31 of 79, we see an 80 in the year field. That is because of a correction factor in the method that we were analyzing in the source code. There we have an if which we say which says that if the year is less than 80, the year is 80. So it's a little detail, but let us know that we are analyzing it correctly. So here we have the opposite table. In the case of GNT plus something, it's very easy because it's the same number. So for example, GNT plus five will put a five in the hour field. In the case of GNT minus something, we have to do the subtraction. 24 minus the local time of the computer. For example, 24 minus three for GNT minus three. That is 21 and 21 will be the offset in the hour field. What we have done here is mapping the GMT uh, that we guess it is with the file date in the APK itself. So you can check the file and then get back to the GMT and the local time zone of the one that compiled it. After all, a good question is, should local time return this? Well, in several documentations, we can see that local time should return a null in this case, instead this information disclosure, because zero is not a valid argument. So, however, we can see in the idea screenshot, the return of this function to be sure that it's local time, the one that is not handling the errors correctly. There in red, we can see the GMT offset free. In this case, this was GMT plus free. We have to know that this bug is present on Windows, Linux, and OS 10. So Android developers uh, using APT will be leaking their time zone regardless of the platform on the ART developing. Okay, once we know a uh, technique by, based on uh, back in AAPT, let's uh, talk about another technique that has nothing to do with a bug, but with the way attackers or uh, creators of applications usually work. As we have said, APKs are basically seed files. And every seed file has a date inside, a date and hour. They take it from the last modified field in the local system of the user. And it gets permanent, uh, permanently uh, inside the seed file. On the other hand, an application, an APK, has to be signed by a certificate. Most of the times, the certificates are created uh, with no CA. They are self signed so there's no CA. And you create it just uh, a few minutes before, a few seconds before you compile it or yeah. Or in other words, you create these possible certificates for signing this APK you're creating. Certificates are in X.509 format. That means that for the creation, creation time field in their own uh, certificate, they take the time from the file system as well. So if you compile it in this date, uh, the certificate will take the date from the file system, but they do it in UTC time without no time zone at all. So let's think about it. If there's a signature file inside the IPK files, that is the last ones to get in the zip file or the IPK. It's the last one and it takes the last modified field from the local, uh, from the local system or from the file system. And we have this certificate that if we think or we assume that this certificate is being created basically in the same moment, a few seconds before, the compilation, you get the time in UTC, the same time, but in UTC. And in the files, 
they have time zone included. So in these examples, you can see that if you think that the certificate has been created 15 seconds, the certificate has been created 50 seconds before the compilation, because dates are the same, hours are the same, and minutes are basically a few seconds. Uh, here, you can do the math between both uh, dates and times, and you will have a possible GMT or local, or local um, or time zone. For example, here is GMT minus seven. Let's have another example. Imagine that this certificate has been created four seconds before the compilation. So the last file in the IPK gets the date on the left, and the certificate has the, the date on the on the right. You have UTC on one side and, and the local time with the time zone of the person in the left side. So that means that this person is maybe in GMT plus one. So in a nutshell, assuming minutes and seconds are close in time when you create the certificate and you compile the application, uh, and the certificates and, uh, and the application are created together, we have information enough to deduce the GMT or time zone of the person compiling it. Because just uh, we can do the math between the UTC in the certificate and the time in the file that is last created when you compile it. For example, here it would be eight hours or whatever. So, and it works. We have created a little Python tool that checks from one hand, it checks the certificate creation date in UDC time, and on the other hand, it checks the signature file date. If we assume they were created at the same moment, the developed time zone would be UDC plus three, because signature file was created one second after the certificate. So the result seems quite accurate. Uh, we thought this is a Fun example because in the email you can check that is .er, which is Eritrea, and this is UTC plus three, but this is basically a coincidence, and as you can check in the certificate, it seems to come from Russia, which is UTC plus three as well. So now we have these two techniques to check uh, by a book, by a bag in AAPT, and this certificate technique to know the GMT or time zone of the person compiling the applications, let's do some statistics. We have a million, a 10 million application uh, set or database that we have checked for, for, for both techniques. The time zone leakage by AAP, AAPT, but we have 2,000 more or less AP, APKs with this. And the time zone leakage by daytimes and certificates, we have almost half a million of them in our database. As you can check, as you can imagine, many of them will share results. So for example, with UTC plus seven, we have like 3,000 uh, applications that has both problems and they leak the same UTC plus seven. So this confirm more or less these techniques and complement each other. Once we had all this information, what we did is taking a thousand, hundred, uh, a thousand samples with each leak, a thousand of UTC plus zero, a thousand of UTC plus one, with the AAPT time zone disclosure back. Some of them were, we didn't have enough. For example, UTC minus seven, we only had six of them because this is America Samoa in the middle of the Pacific and we think there are not too many applications created there. So. We check that against different antiviruses, one, two, plus three antiviruses, and check how many malware was there. This is what we got. We got that GMT plus four, which is Russia. Well, uh, not Russia is usually plus three, but a part of Russia is plus four. GMT plus eight, plus eight which is China. And GMT minus seven, which is uh, USA West Coast. Uh, GMT 
class 11 and GMT minus 8 are not good enough because we didn't have enough samples. We did the same again with the file certificate data disclosure technique. We took a uh, thousand samples with every uh, uh, time zone, different time zones, we took a thousand of them and checked against different engines with antiviruses. And this is what we got. We got that GMT plus five, GMT plus eight, and GMT minus six were the ones with more malware in there. If you imagine, uh, why this little difference with, with the other uh, technique here? Well, we think that this is because of the DST time, daylight saving time, that this technique is uh, relays on the local time of the, compu of the computer, so it may change. But if you think about it, GMT plus eight, which is China, and do not use DST changes remains the same. So we can conclude that uh, we should have done this better. We should have take into account the, the, the um, period of the year where you just change the DST time, okay? But basically what we can conclude is that Russia, which is GMT plus four, GMT plus three and five, uh, GMT plus eight, which is China, and West and Middle, Middle USA or West Coast, are the ones creating more malware. Uh, and it, it, with, this, uh, with this technique, they're creating disposable certificates as well. You have to take this into account. They're creating uh, disposable certificates. So this makes sense because maybe we think, it's just a theory, that the cloud is, is um, too many, many computers in the USA, in the West Coast, and they create certificates in their disposable and that's why we have so many malware in there. We didn't hear the other way around. What we took is all the malware we had with these leakages and checked for the UTC or GMT time zone. And this is what we got. Again, with one technique, the file certificate daytime technique, we got that UTC minus six and UTC plus eight were the ones with more malware. And with the other technique, the, the AAPK back time zone disclosure, we have basically the same, UTC plus eight and UTC plus four. And what is it useful for? Uh, what we did as well is check our database, we have 10 million of them, and we have got several sets of a thousand applications. And we have a rate of 6% of malware in there. And we took a, a set of a thousand APK samples with these leakages or disclosures and compare each other. And we conclude that the chances, for example, with this, the comparing our standard rate, a thousand applications, which is 6% of malware, and a random set of applications with UTC plus eight makes it six times more likely to be malware than our standard rate in our database. Let's see some, some examples with real life malware. For example, this death ring preloaded in some telephones had this file certificate dating uh, problem that it was leaked in the, the time zone and it, and it was Korea, UTC minus nine. And so did UD malware, which had, the, which had this AAPT time zone disclosure black back, and it was Korea as well. This is a malware we found a few years ago. It was a very interesting malware that used, um, once the mobile was infected, it took some user and password from the database of the attacker, preloaded the user and password, came to the came to the telephone that was infected, registered it with this telephone and email and, and everything in Google Play, got the token back to the, to the attacker, and with this token they were uh, uh, associated with the telephone, he was able to give five stars and download fake applications. Fake users registered to real telephones, voting uh, uh, and downloading fake applications just to get up high in the 
in the Google Play Store. This is called Shuaban. Well, we found it um, focusing on this bad uh, GMT info uh, aid, which is China, and some other things like connecting to a PHP command and control, uh, having this get account permissions and hiding behind wallpapers applications. Focusing on that, we were able to find and, and define this uh, malware. And we alerted Google Play and they remove it and it was quite nice to, to research. That's all malware come from China. No, we have for a simple HIDAD that we took a few samples from them. We check this uh, malware had both techniques. You could uh, check that with both techniques that it came from GMT plus three, which is Russia again. And aside, here you can guess in a way that certificates are always created about two or three minutes before the compilation, which lead us to think that they were like automated. These possible certificates created in an automated way and coming from Russia. Okay, uh, with the technique that we were analyzing, probably we'll get the time zone of the Android malware developer. Now we see quickly how we can do an accurate from the time zone that we got to one specific country. Inside an APK, there are some files pretty common. One of them are the RGF documents. Usually they are used for agreements, agreements inside uh, Android applications. Uh, related to this kind of file types, we had an inspiration some months ago when WannaCry occurs because this ransomware shows messages in multiple languages using several RTF documents. Uh, There's a funny thing, uh, a trick with Word Office and RTF files. When you create an RTF file with Word Office, you get inside the RTF uh, metadata. It's called slash deflang. This is your uh, default language in your Word or text editor. So every one of us has a def uh, default language in your, our Word. So it leaks through RTF files. And maybe if you have your, uh, it's quite possible that your Word file has uh, the final languages is your native languages. So it leaks your, maybe your native language to RTF, uh, RTF files that you create with Word. Yeah, uh, we made a research for getting information about WannaCry and among other things, we check those RTF documents for metadata. And as a result, we found that Korean is the default language configured in the text editor of WannaCry's developer. Well, here we have an example of an Android malware, which among its file, there is an RTF document. We have to know that either Android Studio nor other IDs remove the metadata from the media files added by the developer to an APK. So we can check this kind of, of media file to, and get some interesting information. In this case, we found that Arabic is the default language in the author's text editor. There is another trick to accurate the country. If we can get the strings typed manually by the developer, it may be helpful for knowing the native language of her. We can use APT for extracting a string of an APK, but there's a problem because even if the APK is extremely simple, there will be a lot of strings added automatically by the ID just for translation purposes. So in the screenshot, we can see thousands of strings. All of them were added by the ID automatically in a very, very simple APK. So we can do a little bit of magic. <laughs> Using APT for extracting all the resources, filtering by strings, using grid together with regex. A pretty nice command. <laughs> Analyzing the output of this command, we found a way to differentiate both strings added automatically by the ID from those written by the developer. 
Basically, we are checking the origin of the strings, removing those coming from resources where strings of translation are. After all, the only thing we have to do is to check what could be the native language of the developer, just seeing the strings typed manually by him. And we created a tool as well, which is out of line yet. But, uh, what is it? Here. This is not the best samples in the world, sorry. But you can drag and drop an application and it will try to deduce the possible GMT and check for another techniques to get the country and the languages. Uh, the country is basically sometimes it comes from uh, these techniques we have explained it, or maybe uh, with the certificate itself, or maybe analyzing the strings.xml that we have shown, or even sometimes maybe from uh, from the the TLD domains, the dot whatever that the, the application has inside. So you can deduce with these different techniques which is the GMT time zone or the, or the language, the native languages of, of the person. This tool takes all these techniques together and once you drag and drop uh, whatever APK, you will check um, uh, different techniques to, to get in there, even the RTF that we have just talked about. So I hope this tool with, will be uh, online soon. The other one is already all online. This one, for example, says that it comes from from Russia and has some domains with TLDs, and the, the certificate is the standard one for the booing, so it's not useful. So, what are the conclusions here? Is that we presented different ways for not just leaking time zone, but as well, that possibly detecting automatic malware creation because of these possible uh, certificates that are created a few seconds or minutes before the compilation is done. Possible better machine learning features in detecting APK malware. Remember that we said some statistics that uh, could be useful once you create a, um, a, ma a machine learning uh, algorithm. It's useful to have uh, neat features, features to uh, to have a better understanding, so I think this is a pretty one from pretty good one for for machine learning and detecting malware. The ones that are created with uh, these possible certificates or comes from one time, some or another, and a tool for a quick, a quick view of all this information around IPK's metadata. Feature work, feature work, as we said, should be uh, should take into account the DST. So it's more accurate, these techniques. And maybe have a little more sample, more than a thousand samples of each um, of his uh, disclosure technique or whatever. And this is pretty much all. Thank you. Do you have any questions? <laughs> no questions. That's one. Not too difficult, please. I'll not with WordPad and this stuff. It doesn't work. Just work with Word. We check because it has the foul language defined in there. WordPad, for example, you create an RTF file with WordPad, you don't have a, a, um, um, a language. Take into account that this language is the one you have defined in your text editor to, um, to the syntax correction. So I don't know any, any other uh, Office package, but with Word, with Office Word, it happens. Okay, no other questions?
Thank you. Hope to see you in some other platforms.